Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020, the Memorial of St. Padre Pio. I'm Deacon Dennis Holly from Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. Before we begin, let us take a moment to recognize that we are in the presence of God. Let us begin as we begin all our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Our first psalm is Psalm 36, entitled, The Malice of Sinners and God's Goodness. Sin speaks to the sinner in the depths of his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He so flatters himself in his mind that he knows not his guilt. In his mouth are mischief and deceit. All wisdom is gone. He plots the defeat of goodness as he lies on his bed. He has set his foot on evil ways. He clings to what is evil. Your love, Lord, reaches to heaven, your truth to the skies. Your justice is like God's mountain, your judgments like the deep. To both man and beast you give protection. O Lord, how precious is your love. My God, the Son of Men, find refuge in the shelter of your wings. They feast on the riches of your house. They drink from the stream of your delight. In you is the source of light, and in your light we see light. Keep on loving those who know you doing justice for upright hearts. Let the foot of the proud not crush me, nor the hand of the wicked cast me out. See how the evildoers fall. Flung down they shall never arise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you are the source of unfailing light. Give us true knowledge of your mercy, so that we may renounce our pride and be filled with the riches of your house. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Our canticle this morning is taken from Judith, entitled, God who created the world takes care of his people. Strike up the instruments, a song to my God with timbrels. Chant to the Lord with cymbals. Sing to him a new song. Exalt and acclaim his name. A new hymn I will sing to my God. O Lord, great are you and glorious, wonderful in power and unsurpassable. Let your every creature serve you, for you spoke and they were made. You sent forth your spirit and they were created. No one can resist your word. The mountains to their bases and the seas are shaken. The rocks like wax melt before your glance, but to those who fear you, you are very merciful. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. God's word is alive. It strikes to the heart. It pierces more surely than a two-edged sword. Our second psalm is Psalm 47, entitled, The Lord Jesus is King of All. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. He subdues people under us and nations under our feet. Our inheritance, our glory, is from him, given to Jacob out of love. God goes up with the shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our God. Our King, sing praise. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God is King over the nations. God reigns on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are assembled with the people of Abraham's God. The rulers of earth belong to God, to God who reigns over all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God, King of all people and ages, it is your victory we celebrate as we sing with the skill at our command. Help us to always, help us always to overcome evil by good, that we may rejoice in your triumph forever. 
God's word is alive. It strikes to the heart. It pierces more surely than a two-edged sword. Our reading this morning is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider how their lives ended and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teaching. Blessed among us today is St. Padre Pio of Petrel Cina. At Padre Pio's canonization mass in 2002, St. John Paul II referred to that day's gospel taken from Matthew and said, the gospel image of yoke evokes the many trials that the humble Capuchin of San Giovanni Rotundo endured. Today we contemplate in him how sweet is the yoke of Christ and indeed how the light the burdens are worth whenever someone carries these with faithful love. The life and mission of Padre Pio testify that difficulties and sorrows, if accepted with love, transform themselves into a privileged journey of holiness, which opens the person toward a greater good known only to the Lord. In one of the largest such ceremonies in history, Pope John Paul II canonized Padre Pio on June 16, 2002. It was the 45th canonization ceremony in Pope John Paul's pontificate. More than 300,000 people braved blistering heat as they filled St. Peter's Square and nearby streets. They heard the Holy Father praise the new saint for his prayer and charity. This is the most concrete synthesis of Padre Pio's teachings, said the Pope. He also stressed Padre Pio's witness to the power of suffering. If accepted with love, the Holy Father stressed, such suffering can lead to a privileged path of sanctity. sanctity. Many people have turned to the Italian Capuchin Franciscan to intercede with God on their behalf. Among them was the future Pope John Paul II. In 1962, when he was still an archbishop in Poland, he wrote to Padre Pio and asked him to pray for a Polish woman with throat cancer. Within two weeks, she had been cured of her life-threatening disease. Born Francesco Forgione, Padre Pio grew up in a family of farmers in southern Italy. Twice, his father worked in Jamaica, New York, to provide the family income. At the age of 15, Francesco joined the Capuchins and took the name of Pio. He was ordained in 1910 and was drafted during World War I. After he was discovered to have tuberculosis, he was discharged. In 1917, he was assigned to the friary in San Giovanni Rotondo, 75 miles from the city of Bari on the Adriatic. On September 20, 1918, as he was making his Thanksgiving after Mass, Padre Pio had a vision of Jesus. When the vision ended, he had the stigmata in his hands, feet, and side. Life became more complicated after that. Medical doctors, church authorities, and curiosity seekers came to see Padre Pio. In 1924 and again in 1931, the authenticity of the stigmata was questioned. Padre Pio was not permitted to celebrate Mass publicly or to hear confessions. He did not complain of these decision, decisions, which were soon reversed. However, he wrote no letters after 1924. His only other writing was a pamphlet on the agony of Jesus, which was done before 1924. Padre Pio rarely left the friary after he received the stigmata, but busloads of people soon began coming to see him. Each morning after 5 a.m. Mass, in a crowded church, he heard confessions until noon. He took a mid-morning break to bless the sick and all who came to see him. Every afternoon, he also heard confessions. In time, his confessional ministry would take 10 hours a day. Penitents had to take a number so that the situation could be handled. Many of them have said that Padre Pio knew details of their lives that they had never mentioned. Padre Pio saw Jesus in all the sick and suffering. At his urging, a fine hospital was built on nearby Mount Gargano. The idea arose in 1940. A committee began to collect money. 
Ground was broken in 1946. Building the hospital was a technical wonder because of the difficulty of getting water there and of hauling up the building supplies. This house of the elevation of suffering has 350 beds. A number of people have reported cures they believe were received through the intercession of Padre Pio. Those who assisted at his masses came away edified. Several curiosity seekers were deeply moved. Like St. Francis, Padre Pio sometimes had his habit torn or cut by souvenir hunters. One of Padre Pio's sufferings was that the unscrupulous people several times circulated prophecies that they claim originated from him. He never made prophecies about world events and never gave an opinion on the matters that he felt belonged to church authorities to decide. He died on September 23, 1968, and was beatified in 1999. Our responsory. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have set my watchmen to guard you. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have set my watchmen to guard you. Day or night, they will not cease to proclaim the name of the Lord. I have set my watchmen to guard you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. On your walls, Jerusalem, I have set my watchmen to guard you. What you say of me does not come from yourselves. It is the Spirit of my Father speaking in you. Our Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. What you say of me does not come from yourselves. It is the Spirit of my Father speaking in you. The response to our intercessions this morning is, Receive our prayer, O God. God our Savior, Savior, you called Padre Pio to seek holiness through the priesthood and the religious life. In company with all the saints we pray, receive our prayer, O God. Help your church to confess the name of Jesus in every circumstance of life. Receive our prayer, O God. Give wisdom, health, and support to Pope Francis and all whom who have been called by your church. Receive our prayer, O God. Strengthen those who suffer trauma, the loss of limbs, or paralysis, and support their caregivers. Receive our prayer, O God. For Sacred Heart Catholic Church, our priests, deacons, deacon candidates, for our ministers, for our parish staff, for all those who donate their time, talent, and treasure, but especially for our parishioners and those of our parishioners who may be either ill or who have passed away, Receive our prayer, O God. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And our prayer to Jesus for healing and guidance during COVID-19. Jesus, Son of God, you were sent by the Father to bear our weakness. Be with us in this time of crisis. Merciful Savior, heal and comfort the sick, so that with health restored, they may give you praise. Divine Physician, accompany our caregivers, so that serving with patience, they may heal wisely. Eternal Wisdom, guide our leaders, so that seeking remedies, they may follow your light. Christ, the Anointed, 
protect us in body and spirit, so that freed from harm, we may be delivered from all affliction, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. All-powerful and ever-living God, you called Saint Pio, Padre Pio, to guide your people by his word and example. With him we pray to you, watch over the pastors of your church with the people entrusted to their care and lead them to salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May God bless us, keep us in peace, and protect us from every evil through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have a blessed day. Please take care of yourself and each other, and may God be praised.